Isnad Academy and at Tanzil Institute of Quranic Sciences presents Futi Hadith via the Ahlul Bayt by Qari Salim Gaidi. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim لقد صدق الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق لتدخلن المسجد الحرام لتدخلن المسجد الحرام إن شاء الله آمنين محلقين رؤوسكم ومقصرين لا تخافون فَعَلِمَ لَمْ تَعْلَمُوا فَجَعَلَ مِنْ دُونِ ذَلِكَ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا مُحَمَّدٌ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفِّيرُ الرُّحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ تريهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم في وجوههم من أثر السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوري ومثلهم في الإنجيل كزرع أخرج شطأه فآزره فاستغلظ فاستوى على سوقه يعجب الزراع ليغيظ بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما Sadaq Allahul Azim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala wa ba'du Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh All praise and thanks to you solely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Choices, peace, blessings and salutations upon our master and exemplar Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum To all the viewers and to the very special guest in studio today My teacher Qari Maulana Salim Gaivi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I trust that uh, Maulana is well and safe and have, uh, has been safe, you know, under the circumstances, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Taib Maulana, um, we, we're really excited about this particular segment. Um, it's the launch of a very, uh, a very special book. And it's special for a number of reasons. So I'll just show everyone. This is the 40 Hadith book via the Ahlul Bayt uh, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Translation and commentary by, uh, I think it's Muhammad Salim Gaibi, mm. uh, the M. And of course, to us, he's uh, Qari Maulana Salim Gaibi. Maulana, perhaps you could give us some insight into this work, inshallah. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa man wala. So how uh, I got to writing um, <laughs> this particular small booklet, 
I was compiling uh, another bigger work, Arba'oon uh, al-Musalsalat, 40 ahadith on Musalsalat. And mm. one of the Musalsalat is this very one year. Uh, so, um, okay, th- does everyone understand what the Musalsalat is? <laughs> no, I think I think that would actually be a good a good entry point into the discussion. Well, I could begin with the translation of that word, inshallah, Bismillah. Um, so, uh, Musal Salat, we're talking about obviously um, the transmission of these forty hadith. So you will notice that they are via the Ahlul Bayt, meaning the transmission, the entire chain of transmission from myself right up to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, they are via the family of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when it comes to the Musal Salat Ahadith, uh, they are translated in English as being um, pattern chained. You know, this is how Musa Ferber he translates it. Mm. Um, there are other translations like uh, uniformly linked uh, chains. You know, so basically this pattern. Um, it's of different types. It can either be verbal. For example, somebody would say, everybody in the chain would say, Inni uhibbuk, mm. you know, or something like that. Mm. Uh, or it could be an action, like... Uh, I'm actually just uh, smiling um, because that was the last hadith that I heard from Allah, Allah Taha, yes. actually in that, uh, in that exact musalsal fashion, which he did last Eid. Mm. On this very platform, subhanAllah. Uh, uh, so it was just like, well, I didn't mention that and, <laughs> and pull on the heart settings again, with alhamdulillah. Uh, so so it, is, it is in fact something that we, we got from, from not just yourself, but from uh, teachers in our time. And we, we're really grateful for that. So yes, sorry to cut your words. <laughs> uh, sometimes the um, pattern can be in an action of the teacher. For example, um, there's one particular um, musalsal that comes to mind is uh, when reciting um, the end of Surah Al-Hashr, the teacher places his hand on his head. Well, yad ala ras you know, like this. Mm. When it comes to the verse, Lo anzalna hadha al-Qur'an. Ajim. So uh, that's an action. Sometimes it's both. Um, and sometimes it's uh, linked to a particular time. For example, the musalsal of Yomul Eid, uh, Yomul Jumu'ah, and Yomul Arafah, uh, and so on. And sometimes it is linked to, um, you know, uh, particular circumstances. For example, the first lesson that the teacher usually gives in hadith, the first hadith that he transmits and mm. relates to his students is musalsal, the famous al musalsal bil awwaliya so that is basically there's a pattern and the pattern in when i was compiling this bigger work uh this one pattern here is in the chain of transmission that everyone in the chain is part of the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and through this one chain uh, of the ahlul bayt um there are 40 ahadith that are transmitted. So it's mm. one sanad, one chain of transmission, all via the family of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and there are forty hadith which are um, transmitted. So um, the hadith are very short, mm. you know. And um, as I was um, compiling it, obviously in Arabic, I thought that uh, I was actually reading it with one of my students. And um, I thought, you know, a translation of this would, in English would be very beneficial to many because mm. it's 40 very, very short mm. hadith, like one-liners. Right. But uh, even though they are one-liners, the meaning behind those one-liners uh, is just immense and mm. huge. And thinking that... Um, if we can read these hadith and actually bring it into our lives, man, mm. you know, they would uh, actually impact the way we think and the way we do things. I mean, it's, it's very simple things, really. Mm. And uh, inshallah, we will read through it. I mean, and I mean, there and Jazakum comment Allah on them, khairan. Jazakum Allah khairan. I, I have to take a step back. 
because a number of things were mentioned now that we, we have to kind of look at, you know. We spoke about Musal Salat, Malna also mentioned links and Isnad and the Sanad and so on, uh, which of course I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk about because this is the Isnad Academy. But more, more importantly, just for, uh, for some background, Malina's interest is primarily in Quran and Qiraat, and we know Malina for that. In fact, you've authored a number of works uh, prior to this one, and they were almost exclusively on Quran in some way or the other. This one distinctly different. Uh, it's titled Futi Hadith, so it's centered primarily around Hadith. How did your interest peak from the one to the other? Of course, we know you have an interest in Islamic sciences in general, but was there a specific story related to this one? So in Qira'at, something which is um, basically part of the science is our asanid. Mm. You know, wherever you travel in the world and you, you tell a teacher of Qira'at, you go to Egypt or you go to mm. Syria or India or Pakistan and you say you studied Qira'at, they want to know who did you read to? Mm. You know, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. who did you read to? So there's always, who's your teacher? Right. Now, if you say you did this, who's your teacher? Right. I want to know who's your teacher. Who did he learn by? Who did he learn by? So there's always a tracing of your mashaikh, right. your teachers. And um, obviously, that's something which is shared not only in Qira'at, though the, the Mukri, they are very particular when it comes, sometimes more particular than the Muhaddithin. Mm, mm, but in today's time. Yeah. <laughs> This is something which is shared in the science of hadith as well. Mm. You know, uh, your asanid. And uh, alhamdulillah, you know, um, I've been fortunate in that uh, uh, I transmit um, quite a few hadith besides the Musal Salat. You know, I, I've read books to Mashaikh and, and so on. Alhamdulillah. So it's transmission. Uh, of these ahadith that I have read to my teachers and this is part of them. MashaAllah. And we're very fortunate to uh, to get a glimpse into this endeavor of Malina's life. Malina, you, you're driving, you're driving motivation. Um, something that I've personally, uh, you know, taken from Malina and, and I always remember it and I always think, when, if I think about Malina Salim Gabi, then I think about this, which is your, your drive for scholarship. Um, Molina taught myself and many others different works. Uh, myself personally, it was Manawlul uh, Irfan, Fiulum al Quran at one mm. stage, and then it was uh, the history of the Quranic text and Tarikh al Quran as well, and a number of other works. So it was, but throughout, Molina has always been a, an avid reader and writer as well. So you're always seeking to. Uh, further your studies and further your knowledge base, what is Molina's primary driving factor so that I perhaps may benefit and can stop being so lazy and <laughs> get, get myself out of the woodwork, inshallah? Uh, you know, um, life itself is growth. Man. Mm. So even before we are born, you know, we are growing in the wombs of our mothers. And um, that is... A person, as long as he's alive, mm. he's growing. Right. Right. So that's one aspect of his life where he's physically growing all the time. Mm. And there are many aspects to, an, to a human's life. And one of those aspects is his, his knowledge, mm. you know. So as he is physically growing every day, every hour, every moment, he needs to be growing uh, mentally, intellectually, spiritually. Because if you're not growing in those other aspects of your lives, like if you stop growing physically, you're dead. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so if you're not growing, letting your, allowing your mind to, to grow, then you're dead. Subhanallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. You know, Ilman. Subhanallah, Ajib. It reminds me of that saying. Uh, I'm sure it was one of my teachers also mentioned this. Probably Malna Mu'ad. Uh, you know that a fruit, for as long as the fruit is still ripening, it's good. But the moment the fruit is ripe, the next stage is it's rotting. Yeah. <laughs> for uh, as long as it's growing, it's yeah. good. Yeah, uh, Malna Ibrahim would say that. Malna oh, Ibrahim. Malna Ibrahim. Oh, yeah. Subhanallah. Uh, if you green, you grow. If you're ripe, you rot. 
So the idea behind that is as long as you are green and you acknowledge that uh, you don't know everything, mm. you're prepared to grow. Mm. But the moment you have reached a point and you think that you know everything, mm. you know, that's when you, you actually decline. Subhanallah. Ajib, ajib. Malina, um, again, I'm so I'm so sorry to, to, to bring this also into the equation. But Malina Taha Karan, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who we lost uh, recently, still feels like yesterday, uh, was a huge inspiration to many of us and I know for Molina as well and and I know losing him uh, as a mentor as a as a uh, as a colleague etc uh, is very difficult can Molina perhaps give us some insight into the role he played in in terms of Molina's career yeah <laughs> uh, there are so many things that uh, I could say about Molina Taha even the way um you know, he interacted mm. with me, man. You know, uh, it's like, uh, I wouldn't consider myself uh, really outstanding in anything, man. <laughs> but the way he treated you, it's always like um, you were special. You know, and I think he had that with everyone. Mm. And the respect that he gave uh, me and I suppose with everyone else, it was the same. But to, one, to mention one thing, uh, when I came to Monata initially and uh, his teacher was one of my teachers as well Mona Abdullah Patel uh, at uh, Zakaria so when I completed he told me I should come see him when I come to Cape Town so obviously came in a uh, uh, new graduate mm -hmm. uh, Spent a year specializing in Kiraat, <laughs> you know, and uh, Qari Ayyub and so on. I came with my Ijaza, was written out by Qari Ayyub. And uh, so I came to Monata and I showed him my Ijaza. And uh, he looks through the Ijaza and he starts telling me about all the names in the Sanad, you know. <laughs> He's reading through it and he says, you know, this guy here. <laughs> He studied by that one, and this was his teacher, and this was his, you know, he no. gives you his whole family, you know, lineage and right, right. Uh, all that. And I'm sitting and I'm listening, you know, I'm so proud of this ijaza that I got no. from my from my teacher. But I don't know the names in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, when Lata is reading the names and he's telling me about this. And that is uh, probably how he inspires uh, as long as you're open to learn, mm. you know, anything can inspire you to learn. Mm. I thought to myself that this can't be me. I'm the the expert, the expert in Kiraat. But this uh, Maulana now, he's telling me about things that I'm supposed to know. Mm. And then obviously, uh, I started learning, uh, you know, uh, the Asa need uh, reading books, reading on um, the lives, the biographies of the scholars and so mm -hmm. on. And that is something that Mona Taha shared actually with my teacher, Kori Ayyub. But uh, I don't, that's another story on its own, you know. So um, because they shared it and Mona Taha showed me this, that you can actually learn about these scholars. They're just not names on a paper. Mm. You know, and uh, yeah, then I started reading up on the uh, the names and uh, I've written books on the entire, the chain and, and so on, mm. you know. But again, it was uh, uh, the inspiration of uh, Muna Taha, you know, subhanallah. Subhanallah. something as simple as that. Man. Mm. Yeah. No, subhanAllah, I, I find it ajeeb. And then. Uh, you know, this is now after Molina comes back as a as a specialist, you know, as a qualified specialist, and then you get schooled, you know, for for lack of a better term, I have to put it that way, by a Molina who's, who's technically not a specialist in that field. Uh, Subhanallah, was there any at at any other point in Molina's career as as a, a specialist in, in Quran and the sciences of Quran, where in Molina was 
sort of stuck perhaps or didn't know uh, a particular route or, or uh, you know, sort of reach the end of a road where Malnata actually was able to guide you in a way. Because that's just always a, a, you know, a puzzle for me. Like, how is it possible that you have specialists and technically a jack of all trades, but then the jack of all trades is sort of more specialist than the specialist? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, just to say from the onset that in my mind I was a specialist and <laughs> up, up until now... <laughs> People who look at me as if I am a specialist. Yes, well, you know? But uh, one thing, um, and there were many, but uh, Malataha understood Kira'at in a way that I did not. Hmm. So uh, my view of Kira'at was very narrow, in that uh, I just looked at the, the Sab'a and the, the Ashara, and you know, in my world, what I have studied. That was Kira'at. Mm. But Manatoa looked at it holistically and comprehensively. And everything that was uh, documented in books of Tafsir. Mm. And this is actually something that I only understood in the last uh, few years now. Uh, you know, I think back and there are a lot of things that I, I remember very vividly with my teachers, you know, interactions. And one of the interactions, uh, or a few of them, was Manatoa showing me certain kiraat in um, books of tafsir. Right? Why do they read like this? And he, him asking me, mm. right? But his asking was actually teaching me, mm. you know? <laughs> like, uh, you find this. And my response was, no, that's not in the Ashara, so, you know, it, it can't be correct. Mm. And then he shows me something else that also... But uh, he looked at all the readings within the, the seven ahruf that's now, you know, it could be, could be traced, seven ahruf is now a whole mm -hmm. new discussion. But uh, we have, the, what my look at the Kira'at initially was, only the ten is authentic, everything beyond that. Now, it's not important. No. But uh, it's not so many. <laughs> The, even though the ten are authentic, but scholars have been studying beyond the ten for the thousands of years that it existed. Mm. They did not just restrict themselves to uh, just the ten. And some, some of the kira'a that uh, Manatoa mentioned to me then, like when I started looking at the shahs, I said, oh, here's that. That same thing that Monatoa told me, and this is like 15, 20 <laughs> years ago. You know, I'm thinking, oh, this is what Monatoa was showing me back then. Mm. But like it only clicks now. I do. You know, so um, yeah, there were there's quite a few. So even though I'm the expert, I learned from him. And uh, there, was, there were some things that even though, again, I was supposed to be the expert, but uh, Manlata was much better than me. <laughs> was the fact that uh, he memorized the, the Shatabiya, the Usul of the Shatabiya. Yes, I know. And uh, many a time, even in his Durus now, the, the last uh, Durus that he gave, when was it? During Ramadan? Ramadan. No. Yeah, he'd quote from the Shatabiya and so on. But uh, just to mention another incident, you would quote to me also occasionally, mm -mm -mm. you know, some verses and so <laughs> on. Uh, one of my students mentioned that um, he was uh, at this house um, and he was studying at the time, he was studying Arabic by one of uh, Sheikh Abdul Rauf. Mm. And I don't know which Abdul Rauf it is, but um, he was an expert in, in, um, in Lugha, mm. you know. Uh, Monata was buddies with him. Yeah, uh, Monata was buddies with, with many. So Monata was at his house and he came now for his lesson. And they got talking about uh, uh, language mm. and then um, certain readings, Kira'at, you know, because obviously the Kira'at and Arabic, they, they, they linked, no. you know. 
So uh, they they discussing amongst themselves this wadj, this men, this Arabic, uh, uh, you know, rendering of something, and how who reads like that amongst the Quran, and Monato is having another discussion in the lounge <laughs> with somebody else. Uh, and he quotes to them from the Shatabiya, you know, yeah, right. this verse. He says, that's the reading of so-and-so. This is the <laughs> this is my student telling me. Right. Uh, in the last month, uh, he told me this, you know, this incident. So, uh, yeah, when, when Lata, he, even though he was uh, not an expert in Kira'at, but he definitely taught me a few things about Kira'at. Yes, salam. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Amen. Uh, subhanallah, Malina, there's so much uh, that we can benefit from yourself and I hope and pray that we can have many more future engagements. But to get into the the actual reason for, for this podcast, uh, the 40 hadith by the Ahlul Bayt, Samalina, mentioned musalsalat and asanid and isnad. These are terms that may not be very familiar to the general public. And of course, this is Isnad Academy as well, so it presents us with an opportunity to actually unpack the significance of uh, the the concept of Isnad. So basically put, Isnad is a chain of transmission which consists of the names of individuals, narrators, who transmit information from one generation to the next generation. And it's usually associated with the Turath of Islam, the legacy of Islamic knowledge, uh, sort of finding its origin within uh, Hadith studies. And also being sort of the basis for for all of the science uh, sciences of transmission in Islam, as Molina mentioned with Kiraat, with Tafsir, with Fiqh, uh, so it's just across the board, and this of course, you know, has an historical origin. Mm-hmm. So um, two texts that I that I looked at, and I thought I'll just mention briefly, and just we could perhaps have a, a brief discussion on it. Uh, the one I actually chose some of my textbooks from uh, the Madrasa in Strand. We've got Manaj uh, al-Nakfi Ulum al-Hadith by Ustad Dr. Nuruddin Itar. And uh, on page 55, he's got in his Adwar uh, Ulum al-Hadith, uh, the stages that the, the development of ha- Hadith went through. And I'm not going to read everything, but basically under the topic of how uh, Hadith science has sort of evolved, he lays the foundation of the discussion with ظُهُورُ wadai wa وَسَائِلِ مُكَافَحَتِهِ Like the, the, the appearance of fabrications and the means by which the scholars sort of uh, saved a hadith or saved the, the legacy of hadith from fabrications. Mm. So right in the beginning he mentions بَرَزَ قَرْنُ الْفِتْنَةِ الَّتِي أَدَّتْ إِلَى مَقْتَلِ الْإِمَامِ الشَّهِيرُ أُثْمَانِ بَنْ عَفَانِ ثُمَّ مَقْتَلِ الْإِمَامِ الحسين رضي الله عنهما وظهرة الفرق المنحرفة وراح المبتدعة يبحثون عن مستندات من من النصوص يعتمدون عليها في كسب أعوان لهم. So the the era of the fitna came about. Uh, what it is he speaking about? He says that which led to the killing, the martyrdom of the third caliph of Islam, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, and then subsequently again to the killing of the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hussein radiallahu anhumah. And then from there we had various factions coming forth, uh, sects, and those who were sort of preaching a heterodox, unorthodox version of Islam, they started looking for support from textual evidence that would assist them in the uh, in the agenda, and then he carries on to explain that they fabricated a hadith, they invented a hadith that would support the agenda, saying that the Prophet Ali Sallam said so when he in fact did not say so, and thus fabrication started since then, and of course the different factions and sects would invent a hadith that would support the agenda. Um, this would continue, but then scholars needed to kind of sift through what is coming from the heterodox factions and, you know, that which they invented to support the agenda compared to what is actually from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then he mentions uh, they started studying fi isnadil hadith wa fahsi ahwali rawati ba'da an kanu min qabl 
يرجحون أو يرجحون توثيق من حدثهم. So they started asking about the isnad of the hadith and studying it, checking the narrators, whereas before they would just trust those who would narrate to them. Mm. And then of course the famous narration from Muhammad ibn Sirin that we find in the muqaddimah of the Sahih of Imam Muslim and uh, Imam Tirmidhi also has this in his Ilal al-Jami' uh, when he says that Muhammad ibn Sirin said لم يكونوا يسألون عن الإسناد فلما وقعت الفتنة قالوا سموا لنا رجالكم فينظروا إلى حديث أهل السنة فيؤخذ حديثهم وينظروا إلى أهل البدع فلا يؤخذ حديثهم they never used to ask about the isnad, the chain of transmission, and then the fitna happened, and then they would say, you know, tell us about your, you know, some mulana rijalakum, tell us about your narrators, where did you hear this from? Then they would see, okay, which ahadith emanate from the people of the sunnah, or the orthodoxy, and then their ahadith would be accepted, and they would also check which ahadith come from the heterodox groups, or sects, and they wouldn't accept their ahadith. And this would be the origin story, at least, from the Ahlus Sunnah al Jama'a perspective as to where this concept of Isnad came about. So, just very to, to clarify, at this point, it's not that they started making up the Isnad from this point. Rather, it was at this point that asking about it became more important than before. Malala, your comments and thoughts on, uh, on what we've discussed, or at least what I've mentioned so far. Bismillah. Uh, um, if we look at things uh, for me, um, very um, just logically what is happening in the world and how we gain knowledge you know so we have uh, the Im- the empiricists the rationalists and ask uh, how we attain knowledge mm. knowledge mm. right one of the ways of attaining and acquiring knowledge is through akhbar you know uh, reports and um uh, you look at uh, much of what we are exposed to every day it's through akhbar. Mm. You know, uh, I told you now just incidents that took place with uh, myself and Mona Taha. No. You know, those are akhbar. You switch on the radio, listen to the news, akhbar. Uh, the uh, uh, social media platform, mm. we are bombarded <laughs> by akhbar. What's that? You know? Mm. So, what Islam did was basically, it laid down rules. What akhbar are we going to, uh, we basically write down rules to assess akhbar. Mm. And you know, uh, some of the most basic things about ourselves, we learn via akhbar. Right? We are born and we are told. That that was your grandfather. That was your grandmother. You mm. may you never met them, mm. and you accept it. You are no. the most, and that is the most basic things about ourselves, and and, and we learn about it through akhbar. But uh, we're coming now to uh, the juncture where we ask ourselves: To what akhbar do we? say this is credible and we can accept it, we can rely upon this and mm. this is not. So Islam has la- laid down an entire science just to assess akhbar, uh, assess report. And mm. that's why Ibn Hajar, I, I made down a few points now as no. he was speaking. Ibn Hajar later me, he mentions that um, through uh, Asanid, these, uh, assessing these reports, يُعْلَمُ الْمَوْضُوعَ عَنْ غَيْرِهِ you are able to assess that, okay, no, this is a fabrication mm. and this, there's some credibility to this. Based on what? Based on Asanid, the, the chain of transmission, those who transmit, how that report gets to you, right? Your, your, your chain of transmission, who tells you that mm. that is uh, your, your gauge of assessing that uh, particular report and the the the, the statement you, you you mentioned about uh, uh, I hope that that is clear yes that yes about the, the, yes, ak- course, the akhbar yes. that is, is something very important and um, if you look at uh, one verse comes to mind and Munatah used to mention this a lot also initially I remember when uh, Muhammad Awama 
Hafizahullah. Uh, He's still alive, no? I think so. Yeah. When he came to visit, mm. then Mona uh, Ta'a told me he wanted me to read. And uh, this is the verse that he wanted me to read. It comes at the beginning of Surah Ahqaf. And he says, Kul araytum ma tada'una min duni Allah. Right? Those that you, whoever you worship besides Allah. Right? Kul araytum min duni Allah. Ma tada'una. Kul araytum ma tada'una min duni Allah. Aruni ma da khalaqu min al Right? So we, we're working on tangible evidence. Whoever else you worship besides Allah. Right? Show me. Right? What do you see that they created? Right? What did they create? Am lahum shirkun fi samawat. Or do they share in Allah's dominion, His command of what is happening in the universe? Mm. Mm. Right? And then after that, if so, eetuni bi kitabi min qabli hadha. Yeah. Bring to me a book, a previous book, mm. a divine book. Mm. Obviously, a book that has not been interpolated. And here, yeah, if you cannot bring a book from Allah to confirm what you are doing, to justify what you are doing, then, right? bring, bring me some report which has, has credibility, mm. traces of knowledge, right? In the Kira of Hassan al-Basri, أو أثرة من العلم. Even one, just one report. Mm. Bring. And, and that's why um, the scholars would mention that إن الإسناد خصيصة لهذه الأمة That this concept of Isnad, the tracing akhbar and reports that uh, I heard from Fulan, word from Fulan and Fulan and, and so on mm. to the source of what is being said this is only found in uh, the Ummah of Islam, mm. you know, uh, because if whatever they were trying to justify, if in kuntum sadiqin, if you are truthful, truthful then, ituni bi asaratim min al you know, bring mm. me such a report. But they, can, they can't because this bounty, this ni'mah, it's only found was in the Ummah of Islam. And therefore, um, you know, Muhammad Mustafa Al-Azami, uh, when he writes about uh, uh, other texts, he says, we have the Quran, we have a hadith that uh, we transmit from ourselves. We can uh, lay out and uh, recite an entire chain of transmission right up to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for all the qira'at. Right up to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for a hadith Like uh, we will read the chain of Isnad in this book uh, as well But other religions can't do that mm. I mean even the uh, Must- uh, Sheikh Muhammad Mustafa Al-Azami uh, Rahimahullah He mentions that even when it comes to the Gospels You know uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and so on They we can't say that they were definitively written mm. by the gospel writers, mm. you know. So they have this idea, e- even in uh, academia, shadow writers, mm. who actually wrote these gospels, yet these are the authoritative texts. Mm. But that when it comes to, to us, and something bringing up an example again uh, of Munna Taha, you know, um, in one of the, the last discussions, that took place not only in Cape Town, but the entire South Africa was regarding Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, right, mm. rahimahullah. Mm. And uh, they said we couldn't accept what he said because of, um, you know, the clear tashayu that he had uh, in his uh, thought and whatever, right? But what Manatoa did was very simple, I mean, apply the, sim- the, 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 this, this gift and this concept of isnad to what we are saying, mm. you know. So this um, tashayu that um, they were dist- disparaging Ibn Jarir al-Tabari with, it only comes in the last volume of a particular work of his, right? 
But if you look at all the other volumes of that very work, mm. right, you don't find this. And what Munata did was that all those volumes, it was written by Ibn Jarir, rahimahullah himself, at tabari no. But the, that last volume that they are referencing, it wasn't actually written by him. Mm. You know, so something, something as simple as that to clarify a point, and this is, it's, it's very, uh, uh, it's, it's like, um, you know, essential for us. And therefore, Ibn Hajar, uh, he mentions at the beginning of Fath al-Bari also, one of the statements of uh, our predecessors that uh, Asanid and Sabul Kutub, mm. our Asanid, they are the pedigree the of mm. our book, mm. our books, mm. every book that we read, you know, uh, an authoritative text, we have Asanid to those books. You know, you're talking about big books, like uh, huge works like um, the Sahih of Al-Bukhari. Mm. We have a, a, um, a chain of transmission going to Imam Al-Bukhari. And that is our scholarly lineage, you know, mm. to the Sahih of Al-Bukhari. And it was so successful in preserving knowledge that we applied it to everything. Mm. Something as simple as the, the Arba'in of Imam Nawawi, Rahimahullah. We have a sanad for that. Mm. You know, 40 hadith book written by Mullah Ali Al-Qari, written by uh, a suyuti written by whichever scholars. You know, we have a sanad to all those uh, kutub. And this, I think, in the statement that you mentioned um, of uh, Ibn Sirin, rahimahullah, that he says, Inna uh, al min ad that your sanad, it's, it constitutes religion. Mm. فَانْظُرُوا أَمَّنْ تَأْخُذُونَ دِينَكُمْ So be weary from whom you take your religion from. You know, people are, are, are proud now, nowadays. We talk about um, uh, internationally recognized institutions. Mm. They're proud to say that uh, I studied at uh, Oxford University or Cambridge right. this University or even uh, yesterday, um, one of my daughter's friends, she was so, so happy, mm. she got accepted at this one university, you know, things like that. Right. And uh, when it comes to us, when we say, Inna al-isnada min ad our mashaikh, they are our institutions. Subhanallah. Uh, they are our universities, our colleges, and so on. Um, we will hear, and this is something normal, you read in a book, in a book, the sheikh in that particular area, he was a madrasa. Mm. What does that mean? He's a madrasa. Yeah. He was an institution. Yeah, yeah. But just spending and time in his prisons, you learned. Yeah. Mm. He was an entire institution. Mm. You know, Munataha in Cape Town, he was an institution mm, Allah of Allah knowledge. Allah. You know, um, there's many examples that we can give. Like, uh, I don't have a clause on Kira'at except that Masha'ikh must be mentioned. Mm. Sheikh Mutawalli says this, you know, Sheikh uh, Al-Khaliji says this, Sheikh Izmiri says this, Sheikh Fulan says this, Sheikh Fulan says you know, these are our institutions. Mm. It is impossible that we have a clause and not mention these names. Mm. You know, mm. so those are, when it comes to in al-isnada min ad din these are our asa, these are our institutions, mm. and therefore fanzur fanzuru amman ta'khuduna dinakum. If I if I may add, uh, no, uh, I just I just one correction. I think mm. the statement Mullah is mentioning now is actually that of Ibn Mubarak. Uh, Abdullah Ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah, had a similar statement. Oh, he said lola al isnad. Yes. Oh, 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 but I I think I I didn't quote that one that Mullah is mentioning now, or did I? No, I. Something so the beginning starts the same. Okay. Al Isnad, uh, 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 according to Ibn Mubarak, Al Isnad Indi Minad Din. Okay. Al Isnad, La Kola Mansha, Masha. Yes, that's right, yes. Yeah, so Ibn Sirin, and they ascribe it to others as well. Okay. Uh, in Al Isnad uh, Minad Din, Fanzuru mm. Amman mm. Ta'huduna uh, Dinakum. No. I actually yeah. see here uh, in, in this uh, particular work, just for the sake of those who may be interested. That the statement أخرج ذلك ابن أبي حاتم في الجرح التعديل 
uh, and then he, he says an adad min tabi'in so a number of the tabi'in kana yuqalu inna ma hadhi al ahadith din and then it carries on fanzuru amman ta'khuduna din dinakum aw ta'khudunaha and then of course uh, like malna said now ibn mubarak lawla al isnad la qala man sha'a ma sha'a you know had it not been for the isnad then any tom dick and harry would have said uh, anything that they wanted to do which is something that we actually see you know with this uh, saint as received concept that you have in our yeah, day and with age all these reports that we're getting all yeah. these akhbar yeah. everyone is saying whatever they wish yes. they're giving their own versions of, of you know uh, what is happening and absolutely everything, everything so, from uh, politics to medical news yeah. it's just anyone can say anything and people will believe it so for us what do we do we have a system of assessing mm. the akhbar Mm. which comes to to us you no. know and that is uh, yeah it's only it's unique to islam you know no barakallahu fikum okay yeah. Taib, so uh bismillah the the other statement that that i wanted to sort of just bring into the discussion because i found it it nicely you know brought in this this other dimension of the isnad so i'm quoting from jonathan brown's book Uh, Dr. Jonathan Brown, Hadith Muhammad's Legacy in the Medieval and Modern World, um, academic, Western academic scholar of Hadith, uh, quite traditional in his approach, uh, but nonetheless he, he works predominantly in the academy. He says in the introduction to chapter number two, the transmission and collection of prophetic uh, traditions, despite its seemingly arcane nature, the Hadith tradition emerged in the early days of Islam as a practical solution to the needs of the Muslim community. In the wake of the Prophet's death, his teachings served as an obvious source of guidance for the nascent Islamic community as it struggled to determine how to live according to God's will now that he was gone. The study of hadiths began as a practical attempt to gather, organize and sift through the authoritative statements and behavior uh, attributed to the Prophet ﷺ. In the subsequent centuries, the hadith tradition developed to meet new needs as they evolved. By the close of the 10th century, the transmission and collection of hadiths had acquired a new dimension, quite apart from the contents of any hadith. Uh, the report and its isnad became a medium of connection to the Prophet that created authority and precedence within the Muslim community. The development of hadith literature is thus best understood in light of the two general functions that hadiths fulfilled. That of an authoritative maxim used to elaborate Islamic law and dogma, and that of a form of connection to the prophet's charismatic legacy so of course uh, having touched on the the nature of the isnad to allow us to uh, verify and authenticate material that it's genuinely from you know its source whether that be uh, the tabi'in or the sahaba or rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there's also this other dimension that through the asan need we can actually be connected to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam malna your thoughts on this particular section Um, what comes to mind again is, uh, uh, I must apologize, I'm a mukri, so I'm going to quote all the mukri. <laughs> bismillah, bismillah. Uh, Ibn al-Jazari, rahimahullah, he mentions at the beginning of um, his nashr, fil kiraat al ashr uh, and he mentions all the, the benefits of, of studying kiraat, you know, um, the fawaid of it and so forth. And then he's, uh, one thing that he says, Uh, eventually that um, if one studies kiraat and the only benefit is to be linked to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then that's enough Ajib. you don't need anything else mm. the fact that you are able to link yourself to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right what greater honor is, no. isn't there in that mm. i mean he Uh, our entire uh, existence on earth is to please Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was most beloved to Allah. Mm. You know? So, why wouldn't you want to be connected to him? Mm. And um, in this uh, sentiments also, if you think of uh, uh, the muhaddithin, uh, no, the latter day muhaddithin, one who comes to mind, and these are... Uh, are things that I mention regularly to to uh, my students. Muhammad uh, Abdul Hay ibn Abdul Kabir al Katani he wrote Fih Rasul Faharis, and um, he writes there that Kathar Rawi al Muntazim fi hadhi silsila 
شرفا وفضلا وجلالة ونبلا أن يكون اسمه منتظما باسم المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم that it is sufficient honor for any person attaining this um, the sanad you know that his name it's sufficient honor and not only honor he says the fadlan virtue wa jalalatan stature and nubulan you know nobility, nobility mm. that his name be linked to the name of the chosen one muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know that is sufficient honor mm. and This should be the aspiration of everyone, not only scholars, mm. that they are able to link themselves to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I think that uh, through this, so how do we link mm. ourselves to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Right. Uh, one of the ways is going to a sheikh. Mm. And spending hundred years by you <laughs> 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 to acquire all his knowledge. No, um, it's very simple actually. People think that uh, it is, um, you know, exclusive only to um, uh, those who go to what uh, dini institutions and mm, mm. and things like that. It's not. So this forty hadith book it has a sanad right at the beginning, mentioning. Um, the chain of transmission from myself to the the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, if you want to be linked to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what happened for me to acquire this chain is I had to. So, what pages? What pages that on? Yeah, okay, is different asanid. Yes, page eight and nine, okay, and then at the end is also asanid. The one at the end. Let me bring up the the page as well. Okay. So. People can have a look at this, inshallah ta'ala. Um, so, so this is the book, yeah. uh, Futi Hadith via the Ahlul Bayt. Uh, I'll, I will explain uh, shortly and also the, the details for how you can uh, get your copy of the book will be on screen as well when you when you watch this with Nilay ta'ala. Uh, and Malna Salim is currently speaking about uh, page number eight. Uh, is that correct, Malna? Yeah. Uh, okay. That's in Arabic. If you if you don't want to put that, you can just put the, the diagram there. Uh, I don't think everyone's going to understand the diagram, the 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 Arabic. Okay. Uh, page so six and seven. Six page and six and seven. See so here we go. See the diagram. It starts in seven, and that's eight. Yeah. So the the sun and, uh, the diagram basically uh, has the entire chain um, in a diagram and in English for everyone to see. Uh, so what happened for me to have this particular link to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam via the Ahlul Bayt? Um, Sheikh, uh, one of my teachers, uh, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Salih al Ubaid, uh, Hafizahullah, he read all these ahadith to me. So this particular, um, uh, these forty hadith, he read it all to me. But he has many links. Mm. So obviously I couldn't include all. Mm. So I selected one. And I selected that one which complemented uh, my acquisition of the 40 hadith from another teacher of mine, uh, Mufti Muhammad Ali al Bawpali, right? Uh, he's one of my teachers at the Darulum. So uh, the hadith were then read to him, and uh, you obviously, once you make sama of the hadith, then you can transmit it from them. <coughs> Right, and the other two asanid from... Maksama means you, you hear the hadith. Yeah, basically. it's an, an oral audition mm. of the entire uh, 40 mm. hadith. And then the other two asanid that you have there in the link, Ibrahim ibn Salih uh, al-Husayni and Sayyid uh, Salahuddin al-Hassani. Uh, both of them are still alive. Uh, Sayyid Ibrahim ibn Salih is from Nigeria. Uh, Salahuddin uh, is from Egypt. The interesting thing here in why I've selected these two particularly is the, the one is linked to uh, the family of Hassan radiallahu an, and the other one, the other scholar is linked to the family of Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an. And when we speak about the, the Asanid through this particular, this particular Asanid here, they are predominantly those Asanid which are linked 
to these two mm. uh, you know Hassan the grand no. sons of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Hassan and Hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma radiyallahu ta'ala mashallah so uh, if you want to be linked very simple we're going to be doing a reading of the book mm-hmm. once we have completed the reading of a book is actually a an ijaza this is on page 23 it's written in arabic But what it basically says that um, there's a, a, a line there. If you can bring that up for them. So, uh, um, let's see page 23, right? Uh, where you fill in your name and it states there that uh, you have heard all these ahadith that I have read. And the Senate going back up to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So that line... You just fill in your name in that line. And what what it states after that is that your name, you have heard all these ahadith, uh, these 40 hadith uh, being rendered, or I read it to you, or you heard it being read to me. And then what comes after that is uh, the chain of transmission in Arabic. But you have the chain of transmission in, in the front in English as well. And, um, you know, once you are linked to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, remember that we mentioned this is a bounty, a ni'mah, right? Uh, the, f- the fact that we, we are connected to scholars, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and with bounty comes responsibility, hmm. you know? So, obviously, one of the responsibilities is what? Whatever we are reading, we inculcate it in our lives. We try to embody them, personify them, encourage others to do them, and also pass it on to others. Because if this is a ni'mah, then وَلَا تُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Whatever bounty Allah has given you, you'll be questioned about. And if you want to be linked to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is a bounty. But then that bounty has rights over you. Mm. And one of the rights is to pass it on. You know, so once you have read the book, the idea is sit with your families, read it at home. And it's simple, I mean, very, very simple hadith. If you read through it, the one, the last hadith, like it's one line is, is two, three words which form the, uh, the uh, these ahadith. You know, two, three liners and very simple translation and mm. commentary. Yeah, no, subhanAllah. Um, I, just looking through the book as well, it's 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 not something that would intimidate anyone. I think it's it's very concise. Technically speaking, the, the ahadith and explanations in and of themselves would take about uh, less than 20 pages based on the the uh, introductions and the asanid at the back and the front. Uh, there's less than 20 pages of actual text, so yeah. this is not a very intimidating work. But one thing that we shouldn't also overlook here, Molina, as we said, uh, so we have this this beautiful celebration of the Isnad. Uh, we have the the concept of um, author, authoritative text and then our connection with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But even more special with this specific compilation, we have the Futi Hadith via the Ahlul Bayt. You know, and and this is a fuddle in and of itself. Yeah. You know, which 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 adds to the virtue of this uh, particular reading. Yeah. So amongst uh, the muhaddisin, um, they will obviously uh, give preference and precedence of certain asanid uh, over others. Mm. Um, you know, uh, so in the earlier um, uh, centuries, you know, the the hadith Malik and Nafi and Ibn Umar. Mm. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum. You know, that is like the chain to right, have. Right. You know, everyone wants that that particular transmission and so on. When in the in the genre of the Musal Salat, the, the pattern chain transmission, there are many um, Asanid transmissions which are very unique. So you're looking at the uh, Asanid where every a link in the chain is a mufassir, for example. So mm. you have al musalsal bil mufassirin. You know, where every link in the chain is an outstanding call of hadith. Musalsal bil hufaz. You know, 
And then you have the musalsal bi shu'ara and oh, there right. are many of them, right. right? But then obviously, the musalsal bil ashraf, which we are currently busy with, with nobility, right? This is uh, obviously um, has its own grandeur to it because you are linked to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, not. Uh, only through Mufassirin and uh, Lugawiyin and whatever, but you are linked to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam via the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, so that is obviously prestige in itself. Mm, mashallah. But how should a student go about if they want to take part in this reading in the formal sense of actually uh, accepting the ijaza and, and becoming a link in the chain of transmission, becoming part of that isnad, what would be the, the, the best practice going forward? Okay, so w- what happened um, in the, uh, from, the, from the very earliest centuries and generations, uh, it was the practice then that uh, whenever a scholar compiled a work um, and he edited it, his students would make a copy of that particular work from him, and they would read it to him. So they would make sama of the book, whatever he wrote, and the sama would vary. It differs. Either the teacher reads it to the students, or the group, or whoever was present, or the student would read it to the teacher, and he sanctioned the reading, and everyone else makes sama. Sama would basically mean you're listening to the book being read either from the teacher or a student to the teacher. So this is a technical um, term used by muhaddithin themselves. In English, we re- we'd refer to it as an oral audition, you know, uh, where you are hearing the, being, the book being read to the, the teacher. Mm. So everyone is encouraged to, I would encourage everyone to buy a book because this was the, the way of our salaf, mm. right? I mean, I know we're living in a digital era and so on, but uh, if you have the book in front of you, you can make notes in the book. You can, uh, the end, there's an, the ijaza. You can write your name in the book, mm. you know. Um, so I would advise everyone to buy a book. So buy the copy of the book. And if you do not want to buy, no problem. The uh, electronic version of the book is available. Uh, Mala Irshad can share that with you. So, uh, so what you need to do is every time we have, or we, when we're going to start the reading of the book, you need to um, tune in and listen to the book being read. So I'll be doing the reading, and you doing the sama. You listening to what is being read. It, as simple as that. Naam, jazakumullah khairan. Manana, we will we will do our utmost. What I'll do is I'll put a Google Docs uh, form uh, onto the onto the uh, description of the video, and uh, also on the social media platforms of Isnad Academy. So anybody who wants to participate, they could they could download the soft copy from that link, and they could also uh, well you have to you have to fill in your registration information, and then you'd you'd acquire uh, all the necessary information, also the details as to where to pick up the physical book. As Mawlana said, we have, I think it's 300 uh, copies available. So we would love for everybody to actually have a physical copy of the book and take this as a formal opportunity uh, to become part of the chain of transmission. Uh, and more importantly, to become part of that tradition of the uh, the gaining and transmission of Islamic knowledge, this this beautiful knowledge that we have, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, okay, if, if there is one thing I can mention, uh, on t- and this is on page five. Mm-hmm. So here are four asani that I have uh, mentioned in the book, right? Uh, two asani is via the sama, the oral audition that we spoke about, and that's the ideal. You want to hear the book being read from the teacher or to the teacher because there are details in the reading of the book that you would get uh, in the reading or the sama that you won't get otherwise. So how else can you be connected is via ijaza. That is by authorization from the teacher. But uh, 
at what happens when you talk about authorization, the ijaza, there's not necessarily sama involved in it. Mm. So the teacher gives you ijaza, but you haven't read the book. So you are authorized and permitted to transmit the book for him, the 40 hadith from him, but you haven't uh, made sama mm. of this. And the ideal is to make sama because um, every link in the chain has made sama. You know, this mm. is how the book has reached us. That uh, not only did my teachers, or I hear the book, the, all these ahadith being read from them or to them, but they heard it to their teachers, to their teachers, to their teachers, until the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that is something which is again unique mm. because it maintains the the veracity of mm. of what we have here. Mm. You know, no, absolutely. That no added words were put in, and so on and so forth. Mm. Where, whereas with a mere ijaza, uh, you don't get that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Now, Subhanallah, there's actually like, uh, I mean, there's there's a, there's an ijaza seeking trend uh, among students of Deen. And and technically there's no problem with it because uh, not there's no problem with it, but technically it's fine from the perspective of yes, there's getting authorized the barukan. Most people do that. You know, you meet a, a scholar, um, it's a prominent scholar, you, you seek ijaza from that scholar, the scholar authorizes you, then you become a transmitter from that scholar by means of authority. So ijaza then. Mm. But you know, I, I really, I really think there's so much more value to the isnad than just you know the the simple uh, ijaz. Anybody can get an ijazah from anybody yeah. else, and you can transmit it. And then, of course, you get uh, the serious scholars of of isnad and asanid. Actually, I'll never forget you, Muhammad Awama when he came to Cape Town. He said, "Look, uh, you guys need to understand how rare this opportunity is because people come to Medina to seek ijazat from me." And I refuse to take them on because of this whole culture of just collecting ijazat. Yeah. And and he actually wants students to look at the ijazah. And Malata was the same. Like, you know, don't just let that ijazah be a piece of paper or a name, but rather let it be your ticket to actually opening up those doors of knowledge and actually yeah. taking knowledge through those those transmissions uh, and, and, and reading the works and listening to the works and studying the works and actually becoming... Uh, you know, because this this ijaza and this isnad, subsequently, it has life in it. Yeah. yeah but it's up to you to actually do your bit to bring the life that it carries. No, hundred uh, percent with you, Munna. I agree with you. Um, you know, uh, if I just go back to what I mentioned with Munna Ta'a, reading through my ijaza that I got in Kiraat mm. and him highlighting the link, that was an eye opener for me, an mm. opportunity for me to learn. Mm. Right, and this should be it. It could be the path and the start for many. No, that they are reading all these names now, but like you said, there's life behind these names, mm. man. Mm. You know, and the one thing uh, I can mention about um, uh, my teacher Kori Ayub, uh, Hafizahullah. Mm. You know, when when he also when he spoke in class and he mentioned the names of uh, these scholars. He speaks about them with the reverence, man. Subhanallah. You know, and a love for them that is amazing. Mm. And that is something that that rubs off on on the student, man. Yeah. So when we when we're going to be reading through this, we're going to be mentioning a lot of names, mm. you know, through the asanid and mm. so on and so forth. But uh, there should be, like Mona said, it's an opportunity to many. Let this be the start, for you know, for you to uh, do a more uh, detailed look, you know, be a, be inspired by these names. I mean, these are like we mentioned the Ahlul Bayt, mm. the family of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Read into the lives, their lives, you know, what scholarly contributions they have made, and so on mm. and so forth. MashaAllah, I'm actually looking forward to to taking advantage of this opportunity and getting out of Malna some, 
just a little bit of background on some of the narrators as we go through the reading of the book, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. So we can all benefit from that, yeah, that just, passion. Just, just bear in mind, I'm a mukri and not a muhaddis. <laughs> <laughs> so, this was just, oh, by the way. <laughs> Malna, your, your humility is always outstanding, subhanallah. Uh, but no, jazakumullah khairan. I, I look forward to this and I hope and pray that uh, students of deen and also those who are just interested in, in deeny knowledge because technically we're all students of deen mm. you know we can all consider ourselves as students of deen and we'll always be and we'll always be yes. some of us uh, are fortunate enough to be formal students of deen uh, but others you know in every day of our lives, we should consider ourselves as tulabul ilm, you know, seekers of knowledge. Mm. And this is an, a golden opportunity, alhamdulillah. So we look forward to, to hosting this program, yeah. And uh, we look forward to, to having you all join us, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, the scheduling of the program will also follow so that you can stay uh, stay up to date as far as uh, when we will be conducting these these lessons, bi'idhinlahi ta'ala. And of course, it will take the form of Mullah Salim uh, reading through the book and perhaps uh, some discussion on, on the points as we go along. Uh, but until then, Malana, if there's any last uh, nasiha or comment from your side, inshallah. No, bismillah, we're waiting for the next session, inshallah, the reading of the book. Taib. Barakallahu feekum. So until then, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad, subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallahu wa bihamdik, nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.